Happy New Year. I have not been on here in a while. I took a needed break, but I'm excited to be back and making videos for you. And I'm excited to be moving forward on some plans that have been on hold for a while. So, I mean, I checked the date and I think we talked about this a year ago. I'm speaking about my living room makeover. I have started it several times. I've gone several directions. I've been interrupted. I've gotten confused. It, it hasn't been a good time for me to give it the attention that it needs and I'm guessing that is a really common issue among all of us. So I have several rooms to tackle this year but I'm not even going to tell you what they are because I might be over aggressive in my goals but we are definitely working on the living room today. So I want to catch you up on other things, the different directions that I have gone, and what the, my mood boards look like. In last year's video, I had a lot of questions thrown out that, that I was struggling with in this room. It's a difficult shaped room. It's the room that the front door opens into, so it has a lot of needs with traffic and focal points and not being too crowded. But it's, it's long and narrow. They te I think they technically would call this room like a bowling alley type room. It means it's long and narrow. So where do you put the TV? How do you get everybody all together? How do you let traffic flow? And those are the issues that I'm having in this space. But then I had some other smaller issues that I threw out there and you guys commented. I got so many comments. I'm just gonna catch you up on what some of them were. So number one was a chicken crate coffee table that I had DIY'd years ago. It was representing the history of this home because the original owners were chicken farmers. They came in on the train to the west coast and they built this Swanson chicken farm. I liked having that, it wasn't a true chicken crate, it was a lot bigger than the vintage chicken crate, but it represented the Swanson chicken farm and I even put a little sign on it and everything. So it started to feel a little like I had been a little trendy with that idea. It, it was sentimental, but it was also a trendy idea. So in the end, I decided to get rid of it. I sold it and, oh, the other thing was I, the shape was very square and this room has got straight lines all everywhere. It feels like straight lines. So I need to bring in some at least ovals and preferably circles. So that is gonna be a, a switch in here from what I had, was thinking before. We're gonna get some curved lines going at the coffee table. Then we talked about the drop cloth curtains that I did in here. I bleached drop cloths in, and that was good for a few years. That also was fairly trendy. So I've now since switched over to these pleated drapes that I made. I can show you how to make pinch pleat drapes. I have a tutorial on that. And I do love them. I'm leaning towards wallpaper and I don't want it to compete with the wallpaper, so maybe they'll be going into the kitchen. So drapes are a question. If I were to replace them, I think I would do velvet, although I'm thinking of velvet couch. As you can see, I still have some questions. You are more than welcome to comment in the comments below on the direction that you see it going and what you think is best. We talked about the trim in this room, and it has great trim. I mean, these old houses, this, is, this house was built in 1906, and even though it was a farmhouse, they put such character and thought into developing the millwork. So there's a beautiful window seat that you that's the focal point when you first walk in the house, and actually, that was a huge selling point when I walked in the house, that window seat. Oh, it will always mean so much to me. So I wanted to highlight the millwork there. There's great millwork around the ceiling. There's pillars walking into the next room. So I think it's time to give them a little bit of needed attention. However, I have finished the fireside room and I'm working with Revere Pewter from Benjamin Moore, which is this lovely khaki gray color and I did all the trim in there. I adore it and then it's you know bleeding into the living room because of the pillars that divide the two rooms. So I do see myself continuing on with the Revere Pewter all throughout. The piano. So this was my grandfather's piano and of course you know I lost my mother this fall 
and she was a piano, she was a music teacher actually. She had her bachelor's in music, but she also taught piano lessons all the way till, till she just physically couldn't. And this piano was what the one she learned on. So at one point a year ago, I had this Swanson family who owned, who had owned the house. I'm friends with them still. And they offered me the piano from the house back in the day. And of course, that tugged at my heart strings. Now moving pianos is a beast. And trying to sell a piano is basically impossible. I might be being a little negative there, but it's tough. I mean, they're oftentimes free. So I threw that idea out to you guys. And it looks like... Well, I can't count them, <laughs> but it looks like about 20 of you said to use grandpa's and dress it up however I want. And then four of you said, get the antique, paint it, maybe don't paint it. I actually, if I didn't have any sentimental value to either one, I would have chosen the Swanson piano. So this one, it was just a little bit more plain. I wanted more character to it, the, my grandfather's one. And then two of you said, just don't have a piano at all because nobody plays the piano, which is true. Although I love how my kids will randomly sit down and tr try to learn a song or something and the neighbor girl will come over and play and she, she knows how to play. So it does get played and it's a huge sentimental value, especially now after I've lost my mom. So I ended up keeping the piano and I dressed it up. I have a tutorial on that. I didn't change the paint color. I do like it. It's a really beautiful warm cream. I added some appliques, some wood appliques, and then did this rectangle piece on it. Now, it didn't quite turn out how I wanted, and I got a lot of criticism for it, of course, and they said it looked like a picture frame. It does, it looks like a picture frame. Now I'm at the point where I am going to hang a family photo that's rectangular in there and just act like that's what we wanted. I do dress the piano up a lot and I'll have things draping down over it or things, you know, lined up sort of covering the frame, especially in the center. So I think it will still work. I, it does need something else going on, but I'm going to go with the, the picture idea right now. Then there was this corner shelf and I still am not sure what I'm going to do with that. I could wallpaper it with some beadboard in the back. I could start, I, re I really want to learn the starching fabric method, which military wives used to do, and they would starch fabric and then stick it on their walls, and then it was, it's really easy to take down, so then it's a temporary wallpaper. So I'm interested in learning that. If I do it, of course, I'm going to share it with you guys. But that was an idea to put fabric on the back side. I could paint it R Revere Pewter. I'm still, I'm still wanting your thoughts, too, on what I could do with this bookshelf. But it is going to stay. Two of you said to wallpaper it. One of you said leave it plain. And another of you said take it out completely. Okay, two more things. The couch. And I still... I still am needing a little encouragement on the couch. I, right now, it's my Ikea. Oh, oh wait, let me catch you up. I think I've bought three new other couches. Yeah, my husband loves me, I will say that. I've bought them and I've sold them and I'm back to, to the comfortable couch, which is the Farlow couch. And I don't think that Ikea makes the Farlow couch anymore. So I have this velvety mustard colored slip cover and, and that was a direction I looked into going, but it, it's, it's too many colors in here. I'm not going to do yellow. I think I'm going to do the mustard yellow just seasonally, right? So a little, maybe a little spring or a little summer fall too, I guess, but I don't want to commit to this color. So I'm looking into getting a green velvet slipcover done, maybe with bullion underneath that, that tassel trim all along the bottom to dress it up. It's super comfortable, I will say that, but I do need to make it work a little better for design-wise and kind of dress it up. Okay, and then I'm sitting in what we call Kira's Corner. My dog's name is Kira, and I have really cute dog pictures, and we normally hang her leash there, and there's snacks and little things, so I was going to put her bed here, but she doesn't like it. She wants to be with her family. She wants to be by the wood stove. So 
that idea is not working. And then I found these beautiful bookends on Facebook Marketplace, the dogs. I think I, I'm thinking of turning them to gold, but they look like my dog. So there's, there's dog touches. It's a very English thing to do, you know, equestrian or bringing in dogs or even rabbits into your decorating. It's very English. So now she has a smallish bed in the fireside room and she, when she wants to feel like she's a lap dog and she can be by the fire and then if she needs to stretch out, she's getting on the couch and we're trying to break her of that. Send me your ideas, please. Otherwise, I want her to have the window seat because the humans don't hardly ever use the window seat. I feel like I could get it really beautiful and have the pillows the way I want and the cover and just have backup linens that I switch out so I wash everything once a week or something. It's kind of annoying how dirty it can get with a dog, but I am determined to have beautiful and have a dog. So it's a nice space for her. I mean, really what she, if she could have anything, she'd want me to get her a day bed. And I'm not doing that. And I don't want her on the couch. So, and this is what we're trying to do. So I've been working on my secret Pinterest board. I'm gonna share it with you and show you what's going on in my mind here. So these are some of the genres that I like to work with in all rooms that I'm working on. I first of all make decisions about the floor because it's so permanent and potentially very expensive. So I pulled, I don't have a ton in here it looks like. I just have some things that I was drawn to, the overall feel, the, the rugs. This one especially is the one I, I would get it in blue. So I'm interested in this one from Ruggable and then I thought maybe I would layer it over the top of another one I have, or I will just go with the one that I currently have. I have some of these ideas, you know, I really like, I, I'm interested in that look, that's so pretty. But I think I can do that in another part of the house. I just think there's so much going on in this room that I don't want to do the checkered floor. I, I could just put, do way too much in here. Okay, so then after I've got a direction with my floor, or pretty close, I mean, I, ha I have it nailed down to two things that I want. Then I really look at furniture. So the cognac leather kept popping up, and oh, there's the, my piano inspiration. I see actually a lot of leather and dark wood, some simple tables, that one's really pretty, look at that. So, oh, and this little gold little end table. Oh, World Market, I could probably just buy that one. I was gonna paint one I have, but maybe I'll just buy it. So I have some directions on furniture that I'm interested in. Then the walls. I thought about doing something like this, but I just think for how broken up this room is that that is gonna break it up even more. And so of one wallpaper, you know, from, from floor to ceiling that unifies the room, I think is the direction that I wanna go. And I, oh man, I mean, look at this stuff. Ooh, something like that, look at that. Okay, then we're moving on to the textiles. And I'm really drawn towards the plaids. Okay, what the heck is going on in this closet? <laughs> that's a little quirky okay but I back to my point plaids I'm drawn to plaids it has kind of a cabiny feel an old English feel I mean look at that for the window seat what do you think just a combination of really muted neutral plaids and then I feel like that could balance a really feminine wall yeah I clearly want plaid in my window seat I can see that and then I thought, you know, there's some really good washable fur throws. And I thought maybe that would be good, especially where the dog is. Just wash them once a week. So I think I'm going to have the most fun with my pillows. Those aren't plaids, but I do like the little, little William Morris going on over here. We've got some linen texture, some block print. So I could mix in those two to balance the plaid if I need. And then I don't have to do a lot with wall decorations, but... I might do this on top of the piano. Do I have a collection of brass candlesticks holders and then maybe do navy candles. I thought that might be pretty. I mean, at that point, I'm pretty close to being done. This is, this is, these are wall decorations. I mean, I'll put something over the desk. 
I will potentially do the Kira's corner, kind of dress it up like this. Not very much. I don't think it's going to be hard to do the walls in here. Um, but these are my inspirations for the walls. So really, I just need to figure out <clears throat> the wallpaper, the rug, and the couch. And then I feel like I'm about 80% done. Then I'll do some pillows and candlesticks. Oh, the last thing I wanted to share with you is this rug. I'm not sure I like it. I, you know, when I ordered it, it felt to me like maybe a vintage textile would look. I don't know, I was just thinking embroidery or something. But now it feels really modern. It's very geometrical. It doesn't really go with the circular needs that I have in this room. I need to get some more curves in here. So I'll either, it, it, oh, it feels so good. It's such a beautiful rug. It's from Boutique Rugs. To be continued. So that gives you just a little glimpse into what I'm thinking about for 2023. Let me know in the comments below what you're going to be working on and some of your thoughts on solutions for the things that I'm struggling with in this room. And I will be sure to read those. Next week we're going to look at wallpaper and I'm going to be moving the furniture around with you and, and let you weigh in on that as well. Before you go, hang around and look at the befores so you can have those clear in your mind for the current living room that I'm working on. Thanks you guys, I will talk to you soon.